Hi, my name is Nick Christellis, and uh, I'm the author of uh, this book, uh, The Art of the Arrow, How Leaders Fly. I'd love the opportunity to read for you and give you some background uh, on this book. Uh, this is a, a book on leadership, and my purpose in writing it was to try to make this complicated thing called leadership accessible to anybody who wants to improve their leadership or their ability to lead others. Um, so whether you're the head boy at school or whether you're the MBA student or whether you're the CEO of a listed company, um, I'm pretty sure that you, know, you will be able to get a lot of value from this book. Enjoy it. Seven years ago, I want to write a book. I've got all the stuff on leadership in my head. I need to write a book trying to simplify this thing called leadership and make it accessible to all people. I started writing and eventually I wrote about 1,500 pages. I took everything I knew about leadership and put it down. And the more I made it visible and looked at these 1,500 pages, the more confused I got about what this thing called leadership is. And the more, con and more confused I got about how the hell do you put this into an accessible book that people will understand and be able to use, relate to and use. I also thought to myself, well, I didn't think it then, but I realized afterwards. But that's one of the things that leaders do. Leaders take this mess of complicated environment where that people look at and think, oh my hell, what am I going to do now? And leaders condense it to its essence and make it simple, clear, and focused for everyone to understand. Right? They, they get rid of the complexity. It was then that I realized, and I want to expand on this, that leadership and management are two totally different things. It is like breathing in and breathing out. They are both, to they serve a totally different function. Breathing in, vital for life. Breathing out, just as vital for life. Both have to be there, both together equal life. Right, the same management and leadership are separate. Both are necessary for sustainable success, whether it's organizational success or individual success. The word management comes from the Latin root word manus, hands. Hands, what do hands do? They do. Hands, they do. Hands on, hands do. Management, I manage things. I manage my life, manage my diet, manage my department, manage my organization. Hands on, I do. The word leadership comes from two root words. One, a Latin word meaning feet. What do feet do? They go somewhere. The other root word that the word leadership comes from is an old English word called laidra. It means to die for. Leaders are going somewhere, they're on a journey, and they stand for something that they prepare to die for. Leaders are clear on what their personal journey is, what their organizational journey is, what their department's journey is, and they have a set of principles, call it values, there's a set of something that they stand for. So I, I, I slowly started to realize that what you do is management. In, in order to execute this journey, in order to, to live by your standards, your non-negotiables, right, you, you have to do stuff. But leadership is not what you do. Leadership is who you are. Leadership is who you are. Right. That then comes out in what you do, but it starts with who you are. That is why we recognize today that leadership development is essentially personal development. Right? The missing, key missing ingredient is you. You are bringing yourself into the way 
you communicate the objectives, in the way that you communicate standards, in the way that you give feedback, in the way you give criticism or positive feedback, on the way that you grow people, you are infusing yourself in that. If leadership is who you are, what happens if you don't know who you are? What happens if you don't like who you are? So I come back to say, essentially, leadership is personal development, right? Leadership development is personal development. I looked for a simple way of saying, how do you know if it's management or if it's leadership? If you can measure it, it's management. You can't measure the leadership in the artist or the leadership in Nelson Mandela or the leadership in anybody. If you can measure it, it's management. And unfortunately, what happens is because we brought up in that world, and I'm guilty there too, we want to unpack it and measure it. You know, okay, how can we measure it? You're gonna, you're gonna teach me to be a better leader. How are we gonna measure it? Heard that before? How are we gonna measure it? You can't, right? You can't. So I had to now think of a way, and I stumbled across it, uh, coincidentally, but here I had what I now considered was leadership and what was management. And I have to be honest with you that when I go and look on the bookshelves and I look at all the stuff under the heading of leadership, 99% of it is actually management. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's valid and it's correct and we need to know it. But it's not leadership, it's management. So I eventually settled on the idea of an arrow as a way of depicting leadership. The arrow has a number of parts. First you have a shaft. The shaft of the arrow is the part that executes the flight. In other words, the shaft gives it momentum. It's what executes the flight of the arrow. It is equates to managing. What we do there, the setting of the goals, the drawing up plans, objectives, etc., etc. These and, and what we try and do with people to manage the behavior, that's all management. Okay, but you know what? If, if you look at the amount of success that that brings, <clears throat> it's not that great. Why? Because it takes behavior to execute the plan and the goals for a start. And the truth of the matter, something I've realized is people, because that's people behavior, people do not want to be managed. They want to be led. If we get the next part of the arrow, the arrowhead gives the arrow intention, it gives it direction. It, it, it gives the total intention and direction of the arrow, right? The shaft, the execution is short-term management. The arrowhead is longer term, and that is where the leadership comes from. So you've got the management, you've got the leadership. Leadership comes from the arrowhead. Now, if you look at what makes up the arrowhead, then... Three things. Firstly, we have purpose. Purpose answers the question, why are we doing what we do in that shaft? You need to ask the question, why are you on earth? Are you here on earth for something to do? Or are you here to do something? Right. The next thing is, in the arrowhead, is vision. Vision says, now we know why we exist. Where are, we go where are we going? Vision is your, the image in your head of what this purpose would look like if you were living your life doing it. You can either fight or you can flee or you can fly through it like an arrow. Leaders fly. Right. And then the last part, and I've included it in the arrowhead, is strategy. And here I'm talking about strategy broad the broad pillars of strategy the long-term strategy right it's part of your direction of your intention it's not short term 
It's longer term. It gives direction to everything you do. It, that is where passion comes from up there. Right? And too many companies today, unfortunately, when they look at strategy, uh, are going there and it's not really strategy. It's operational strategy. It's, a, it's, it's shaft strategy. It's what are we going to do this year? Which you have to do. You have to have an operational strategy. But it's got to be based on a long-term, clear strategy that has a number of pillars that gives you clear identity. You know exactly the, the top third of the shaft is called the red zone. It is rigid. It does not bend. The goals, your goals are rigid. Your goals that are based on where the arrowhead is taking you are rigid. We set our goals that's the goal. That's the budget number. This is the objective. Very clear. The bottom two-thirds is called the blue zone in an arrow. Your plans need to be flexible because the research done by Harvard shows very, very clearly if you look at success and you say to people or organizations, did you have a plan? The answer was yes. Okay. Did you get there via your plan? And the answer is no. Three steps later, we thought, now wait a minute, we're on the wrong track here, okay? And you have to start panel beating. So that is why the worst thing you can say is stick to the plan. Okay? So that is, that is flexible, and behavior needs to be flexible. Now, if the plans and the behavior, especially right at the bottom of the arrow, if the behavior has to be flexible, we get to the next part of the arrow, which is the fletchings, or sometimes called the veins. What are those feathers at the end of an arrow there to do? Stability. Stability. Okay, in aeronautics it prevents pitching or yawing, in, in, and planes have got systems of preventing it, because with turbulence, as with the turbulence of life, and, excuse me, turbulence of a business environment, that arrow can get knocked off course quite easily. So it has the fletchings or the veins, and those are basically the values or the non-negotiable principles that we live by, which keep us stable and give us stability. In any good arrow, 60% of the weight is in the arrowhead, 40% in the shaft. If you take an arrow, an arrow has what's called an FOC score, a forward of center score. If you put an ar a good arrow, which is very scientific, on your finger, you'll find that it balances just three quarters of the way up the red zone. The weight is in the arrowhead. And let me just say that the most vulnerable part of an arrow is where the shaft connects with the head. It can break there very easily. And that's where we get the break in organizations and with our lives. And you know what? In simple terms, if you take, that, if you take the shaft without the arrowhead and if you shoot it with the bow, it's going to go like hell because it's got momentum. But you it, it's got no direction. It will land up where you didn't want it to land up. Okay, so, so we need to have 60% focus at the top, 40% focus at the bottom. If you take the arrowhead without the shaft and, and send it, it's going to go flop, like many visions and dreams and purposes go, because you haven't got the management below to do it. So, let me finish, because this is we read for you. I won't, I won't, I'll, I'll, I'll fail if I don't read for you. <laughs> if a bird thinks too hard about how to fly, it may never lift off the ground. A bird simply flies. Same with leaders. Leaders don't think too much about leading. They lead. So absorb from this book whatever resonates with you. Live with it, ponder it, start building your own arrow. Try out some of the suggestions, but do so with a sense of curiosity and openness and trust that you already have it in you to fly. The celebration of arrival happens in the future, but the ecstasy of the flight happens now. Purpose, perfection, beauty, adventure, discovery, flow. Any way you describe it, it's what human beings desire. It's what great leadership provides the opportunity to fly. So this, this book, obviously, I don't want you to think that the book is just about personal leadership. There it is more about business leadership than personal leadership, but it is a personal leadership journey.
Good luck. Thank you.